Bleh. So what's they the started? famous line, Nick, that he says that when he talks, he talks about it in the interview you did. Uh, Nick has had the privilege and pleasure of interviewing the Stooges, oh God, being in the amazing. same room, which we're not going to talk about today, but is something we right. have to talk about at some point. Um, oh, for but sure. you, you, you asked him a question, or some, one, of, one of the three of you asked him a question, and he gave the, you know, it's not like, a, you know, it, it's kind of a manic, manicured answer that he's had to answer a thousand times over, but it's the truth. He talks about how they're not thinking in terms of like, I want to bring punk, I want to make punk rock. Right. They're like, I wanted to bring the blues to teenagers. I exactly. wanted to do jazz, uh, you know, right. bring all these elements, these elements that were outside of pop music and sort of go back in time. But he says this, this quote, and I wish I had it off. I'm saying this off the top of my head. It was something like, I wanted to bring the blues to like white teenagers in yes. the suburbs. And I'll tell you where all that, what all that happened from was, as you know, before the Stooges, Iggy was a drummer before he yep. became yep. A, a, a vocalist. So, a phenomenal drummer, oh, uh, from what I understand. Drummer. And the yeah. Iguanas, the prime movers. So what right. he did was, at that point, late 60s, between then and the Stooges, he went to Chicago. And he was like, I'm going to, if I'm going to be a Paul drummer. Paul Butterfuse Band. Right. If I'm going to be a real drummer, I'm going to go to Chicago and learn from the black drummers and the black musicians so he went there and he played with some pretty big names and what happened was he said to himself okay well i can never play with these guys it's part of it's like honey coming off their 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 fingertips the way they play it's like ingrained in who they are their genes genetically so he said what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back to to ann arbor i'm gonna go back right. to you know detroit area Get these guys, and I'm going to do my own version of that. What these black guys are doing, but how I see it, and I'm going to take everything I learned here, bring it and put it through them for the the audience, the white audience or whatever audience he was, you know, wanted to perform for. So that was exactly it. He, he wanted to bring all that, and he, they were looking for the fringe. They, they weren't right. playing to the guys who were, you know – the hippie type that was, you know, intellectually, whatever he wanted the right. friends. You wanted the, the outside people. These are the people that were going to understand this music. It's as bass as can be. You got to remember that first yeah. album, they were told to create those songs before that. They weren't playing any of those songs. Right. As you may know, they're from playing... 1967 to 1968 yeah. or 69. Yep. Late, it right. was so super avant-garde and like weird and big Harry Parch, Sun Ra, the, these type of guys. They made instruments out of vacuum Sun Ra. cleaners. Yeah, he put a mic in a blender. Right, mic in the blender for the, sure. Uh, golf Vaseline shoes, on the face. All that golf shoes and and uh, contact paper and microphone dancing on them. Yeah. Scott Ash and the drummer had kettles, you know, they spray yep. painted a lot of dirty words and shit. And he played them with hammers. It was, it was like that. It was a whole, they get up avant-garde. Yeah. Avant-garde on acid weed and just went to town with it. The first show right. was on Halloween too. Just, Oh, I did not know that in 67. Yes. yes. And at a, a little party at, at a frat house. So you have to imagine kids, guys, people th th imagine this. What else is happening in 1967? A few months earlier, Sergeant Pepper, the pinnacle of what is going to be of, of pop at this time of like what this of what music has been building towards for the last like, you know, <laughs> 10 years, really, you right. know, it so culminates. And all of a sudden, the counterculture at the same time in 1967 is is happening, too, because you have you have the Velvet Underground, you have the MC5 and you have Iggy and the Stooges all in their like very early stages, gestating and formulating. And they are the reaction to the reaction because here's the thing about those garage bands. I mentioned, what are the garage bands for then? The garage bands are still doing, even though their music is raw and dirty and rough and wonderful and just like amazing. They're still kind of in the same mold as a band like the Beatles or anything else. You know, sure. they're still in that sort of paradigm. Right. These these bands, the MC5, C5. The, the Stooges, yep. and the Velvet Underground are 
the like they are the not, underground of the time. Yeah, the, yeah. the underground. They are doing the. They're not trying to chase the puck. That's what it is. The right. garage bands are chasing the puck that's already been established. And those exactly. guys are like, no, we're going to like do our own thing. And if you really want to trace it, the next thing that pops up that really refines what's happening, because all that stuff is considered to be proto-punk. Right. And what proto-punk means, it's punk music before it has a punk attitude or a punk aesthetic of some kind that would come in the next 10 years. But it was established at a time before there was a word for it. So they call it proto-punk. It ended up being the template for the bands right. that came after, soon after. Right. And the next the next phase of that would be like the New York Dolls. Right. Would immediately come right after that. Yep. But what's interesting is, this is what I really wanted to pull from what you said, because you said it so well, how they played and they like, that it came like honey from their fingers and he realized he was never going to be able to run with them because he could never soar to such heights. But there's one other element that comes into the picture, and that is he sees Jim Morrison in the doors. Yes. And he sees this guy walking around in leather pants without his shirt on. Yep. And, you know, the doors are not punk, even no. though the, we inherited the neutron bomb, which is in the L.A. punk story, mm -hmm. actually begins with the doors. It does not begin with the Stooges. The, that's and it's the just, Please Kill Me yeah. of the West. Oh, Coast. yeah, that too. Yes, that too. That, that it's book. in Please Kill Me as well because yeah, of Electra. Yeah, neutron right. bomb book you're talking about with the germs and all the Yeah, LA that's the West people. Coast Please that's Kill Me. That's what I consider it. Right. No, you're super right about that. And what you have is, so you have Iggy is – you know, as he puts it, I'm, I'm quoting Iggy. Iggy's like, I was humping some girl while I was watching Jim Morrison. I couldn't take my eyes off of Jim and his magnetism and stuff. So he's taking that and everything he learned as a drummer playing with the Paul Butterfield Blues Band in Chicago. And th and this is what happens. And Nick, I'm sure you can, you, you know what, you, you could relate to this well or, or understand this concept. It's a phenomenal concept. This is the concept of all creativity. What ha it doesn't matter what it is, what, no matter what kind of music, no matter what kind of film or art or anything, person witnesses and sees thing that, that connects with their taste mm -hmm. and aesthetic that they aspire to and then tries to do it themselves. But when they, when it goes through their filter, right. It turns into something completely different. Do you know who the master of that is? Is Bowie it was the master of that. He, I would say yes, Bowie was the master of that. But you know what my favorite everywhere. example is? Yes, What's that? But you, my favorite example is the Ramones. Ramones, because the Ramones yes. are like we love the Stooges, but we're trying to write like Beach Boys. I, I want to write Beach Boys. <laughs> yeah, like what? Wait, Sheena is a punk rocker. That's punk Great. rock, right? No, no, oh, no, says man. Joey Ramone. That's it's a Beach, Beach Boys. Boys song. Yeah, it's a Beach Boys sped up. The Beach right. Boys are one of my favorite bands too of all time. Love the Beach the Boys. Way. 